Hey, this is Scribbly again with another pen review. And of course, again, I have something very interesting for you today. A Diplomat pen. It's been quite a while that I have reviewed a Diplomat pen. Uh, I have reviewed quite a few Diplomat pens over the years, but it's been quite a while since the last one. And uh, I review right now, right here for you, the Diplomat Nexus, which is their latest, their newest, and also their most expensive fountain pen. Diplomat has been founded in 1922. And since you're all fantastic in mathematics, you do know that then last year in 2022, it was Diplomat's 100th birthday, Jubilee, call it whatever you want. For this 100th year occasion, Diplomat tried something new, something innovative, something different, and they have launched this pen right here, the Diplomat Nexus, which in essence is a eyedropper filling fountain pen taking heaps of ink. The pen comes in this uh, fairly large cardboard box here. And uh, if you open the cardboard box, there slides out this fairly large metal slash cardboard thingy open it up like this inside you get a diplomat warranty international warranty card you get a little nexus booklet that shows you how this overall filling system thingy works and i'll show you that in a second um you basically put the pen in this little container that it comes with, also comes with a bottle of ink, and then you uh, fill it with a syringe, a bulb syringe, or uh, whatever you wanna use to fill it, uh, that also comes with that pen. That's what that looks like. And then you close it, and then you write with it. Let me do that once more slowly, so that if you wanna read that, you have the opportunity to pause your video and uh, check this out because I'm not going to be able to read this all out aloud for you right here. There you have it. That should do the job, the trick. Put that back. Let's dig further in. Here, that's where the pen sat. If you take that out, it's called Nexus, as I said. If you take that out, it comes with two of those syringes. They are fairly large, but you need them. Uh, I think, I haven't measured it, but Diplomat claims that this pen holds the equivalent of seven ink cartridges in terms of ink amount. And uh, I mean, this whole barrel, um, it has like an inside barrel as well. Uh, of course, this is a metal barrel. It, the pen is made from aluminum, uh, brass and, uh, and stainless steel. So of course, the ink could not get in contact with the metal because then it would corrode. But uh, this inner mechanism, I would est estimate it's about that size that fills with ink. So yeah, you need uh, quite a big amount of ink. Uh, I don't use those type of things to, to fill it. I, I use that kind of stuff, you know, like with, oops, with like a, a blunt needle. You can get that stuff on eBay and so forth. So that's what I use to fill the pen. Uh, I find it's a little bit, I have a little bit more precision with it. Um, it comes with a bottle of, uh, in this case here, black ink. Um, and then as you've seen in the booklet, when you refill the pen, then, you know, the pen goes in here, you unscrew it and you put the other part of the pen in here. I don't do that right now. Um, and you've seen it in the booklet. If you pause the video, you can check that out. Diplomat has a video on their website where you see that as well, because the pen is full with ink, but I'll open it. I'll show you the mechanism, but I just don't put it in here now that it's full of ink and just uh, smudge everything. But I mean, that's, that's what you get. Uh, that's what that is. Let's now have a look at that pen. I have right here the black and chrome trim version. There's also a black and gold trim version as well as a blue version of the pen, uh, either with chrome or gold trim. Uh, it's uh, completely thinkable, <coughs> excuse me, that Diplomat, of course, uh, over the um, upcoming time will launch the pen in different other color variations. Uh, but as said, this here is the black chrome trim one. It is a fairly heavy pen coming at uh, coming in at like 55 grams, something like that. Overall, it's a very large pen. I'll do a size comparison in a bit. It's basically 
a cylindric pen that has uh, capped off ends. Fairly reflective silver finial here with a laser etched or laser engraved Diplomat logo, the ink flower logo that they have, which I find very, very beautiful. Typically on Diplomat pens, I think on the Aero, you also have like a similar laser etching, laser engraving. Uh, typically it is like a slightly different finial, uh, in a, in a uh, ink flower in a white plastic, uh, disc. Um, right here, they went a little bit for the type of um, finial uh, asset that they went for with the arrow as well. Uh, I think it's beautiful. It's a very large version of the logo. I don't think that any other Diplomat pen has uh, such a large logo, but I do actually like it. Oh, sorry. That was me banging into the camera. Uh, looks very, very cool. Uh, you got a clip then uh, with a ink droplet kind of cutout, which I think is also cool. Ink flower, ink droplet, very, very nice. The clip is not spring loaded. It's just a tension clip, um, has pretty good tension. Um, I do find the clip a little bit, I don't know. It's a, it, it fits the design of the pen, but like overall it appears a bit, it doesn't look cheap, but I find it a little bit underwhelming for a pen of, uh, that price, and I'll talk about the price uh, in a bit as well. Um, and just like a pen of that caliber, I, I think they they could have done something more with the clip. I mean, on, on the Excellence and Excellence A Plus, you have like this like very massive clip which is spring loaded. Check my reviews of that pen of those pens, and then you'll see the comparison. Uh, so I do think they could have done something more bulky, a little bit more um, pronounced. Yeah, I mean. I don't hate it and it's it's fine and I like the ink droplet here, but I think they could have done something more with that clip. Anyway, uh, then you just like have like a very massive center band here with nothing on apart from it being a silver center band. Then you have a cylindrical barrel. Um, you have a fairly large ink window, which is super cool because you can see the ink capacity. That ink window, um, I noticed, uh, is a little bit sharp on the inner edges. Uh, I had a little bit of email forth and back with Diplomat, actually, and I asked about that, and they told me that they've noticed it, and they're actually right now in the process of improving that so that those edges aren't so sharp. It's not crazy. It's not that you would injure yourself at it. I would say, like, don't give this pen to a child or something like that. But when you fiddle around with it a little bit, you just notice that they're a little bit sharp. And But as I said, they, they seem to be working on that. Um, there was no option to make this ink window in this in line with the barrel um, because, as said, this is like an, an inner mechanism and the purpose of this uh, ink window being somewhat recessed into the body is, and I'll show you that in a minute as well, is because the ink, I don't know if you can see that, but this inner body actually, when you cap and uncap the pen, does move. If you pay attention to this little white dot here, which is a grain of dust. And then you will perhaps see it moving up and down ever so slightly. It's perhaps a travel of two to three millimeters, not more. But if you're carefully observing it, I think you can see that the inner barrel travels up and down. The purpose of that is like it has an inner ink seal. And when you cap the pen, it does seal the ink container off from the feed mechanism so that you can travel with the pen on an airplane. There's no leaking and whatsoever. But again, I'll show you that in more detail in a second. And then at the end, you have Diplomat Germany, which is kind of cool because if you hold the pen and you write with that, with it like that, you see Diplomat Germany, it actually all aligns, which is all very, very nice as well. So that's that. Uh, then as shown you just right now, it's a screw on cap. Um, comes off with only a quarter, maybe half of a turn, between quarter and half of a turn, which is fantastic because it makes for a very, very quick and nice note taker. It has a fairly large step down here, which you don't feel at all. Uh, it has, uh, of course, only two threads also, because that's why the cap comes off so quickly. They are not sharp whatsoever. And it then has a cylindrical, slightly, ever so slightly tapering section made of steel. The section does have some ribs in order to prevent your fingers from sliding, because, of course, metal section 
and slightly sweaty fingers are not necessarily very good friends. I don't like metal sections personally. I know a lot of people have no problem with it. Uh, I also don't have a problem with it, but I just don't like them per se. My fingers aren't slipping and sliding on this section. Uh, I have to say that because uh, the ribbing, of course, does help with the grip. So it's not a Lamy Studio, you know, completely polished chrome section, but I also won't lie. Uh, the section of the Lamy 2000 or a Pelican M800 does work a lot better for me just because it's resin, it's plastic, and I do find the grip to be more comfortable. You then have a fairly large number size nib on it right here with a fantastic feet down there. These Diplomat nibs are actually super fantastic. I think it's Yovo that produces them for them. You have a Diplomat on here since 1940, uh, 1922. You have the Ink Flower logo, which I find very, very beautiful. And then you have F for Fine. Uh, I'll write with that nib in a moment. It's a very wet writing nib, which perhaps has to do with the ink and feed system, uh, with the, yeah, with the ink and, and, and feed system right here. But all these Diplomat nibs always write absolutely perfect. Like I think I've had like uh, five plus Diplomat pens in my hands over the last years and I have never found a single nib that hasn't written absolutely perfect. So this is fantastic. Then when it comes to filling the pen, as said, uh, I'll have to put it down like this right now and then I'll open it up. And then I have to be a bit careful here that I don't do any spillage. So here we go. Um, and then, you know, in this uh, little packaging that I've shown you in a second, uh, you would have the pen sitting in there and then um, you would have uh, the section sitting in there and then you draw up ink and then you fill the pen like this. You have a rubber O-ring sitting here that helps with the sealing. Um, and then you have like this inner rod right here. Um, this is, has now black ink, so you perhaps can't see it very, very properly. But this inner rod, a couple of millimeters down, has a, I think you do see the ink in there a little bit, has a ink seal sitting there. Uh, another rubber O-ring type-ish ink seal. So the rod in the middle here actually is like the ink seal. Um, and what happens when you refill the pen and when you close it again? Oh, this is also wonderful because the nib will always align, the face of the nib will always align with the uh, with the ink window and with the Diplomat logo. Uh, I pointed out before that this is a little bit sharp, uh, so it's also great that, um, I said not excessively sharp, but so, so it's good that this face is upwards and downwards and not like that, so then um, you would maybe feel that more. Like this, there is absolutely no danger in you being able to feel that, but getting back to that road inside, um, when you now close the cap, the cap will push the whole section, including that inner body that, I don't know, again, if you can see that, does travel those two or three millimeters or whatever that is, will then basically push that rod into the section and through that shut off the ink. It's a shut off valve so that there is no ink burping out when you're traveling with that pen. So that's a fairly cool mechanism. Uh, I do like that. Um, and as said, like it allows the pen to carry a lot of ink. Let's do some bit of writing with this. As said already, uh, completely flawless, absolutely fantastic writing nib. Diplomat Nexus, uh, I even forgot uh, if it's one or two X, uh, it was one X, so sorry for that. Once more. Diplomat Nexus, fine nib in this case. 
It's a steel nib, um, so there isn't a whole lot of, uh, you know, line variation. If you press it really hard, you can get a little bit out of it, as you can see right here. But it's like pretty much a nail, this nib, uh, which I do like because like it allows you to ex actually write a fairly consistent line with it. You know, it's not like these pilot nibs that are super soft, super bouncy, and you have to be very careful because if you're uh, ever so slightly heavy handed, you will get unwanted line variation. As you can perhaps hear on the paper, the nib does give a little bit of feedback. So it's not a, a warm, warm butter on glass kind of feeling, which I personally like. I don't like these like super smooth, little bit over polished nibs. I actually appreciate it if I can feel the feedback from the paper and if I can feel the writing sensation. Beautiful. One of the best steel nibs out there. Uh, I always go as far as saying that I personally believe that these Diplomat, uh, which in the end is Yovo nibs, um, uh, but perhaps with a special kind of quality control, I don't know, because um, yeah, they always write absolutely fantastic, absolutely flawless. I always go as far as saying that the Faber-Castell steel nibs and the Diplomat steel nibs, maybe together with the uh, Lamy steel nibs, um, but, but I would say it's maybe Faber-Castell and, and Diplomat that makes the best steel nibs out there. So absolutely fantastic. Last thing we need to discuss here is price. This pen costs, as I said it already, it's the flagship pen now of Diplomat. Before it was the A or A+, plus. Um, now it's the Nexus. It costs 385 or 390 euro, which I honestly do find too expensive, if I'm honest. Because you may say, well, it's now the flagship pen, and you may say, well, um, do a size comparison. I almost forgot about doing a size comparison. I, I will do that after discussing price. Um, you may say a Pelican M800 or M600 also costs between 390 and 420 euro, something like that. That's true. They also have both innovative filling mechanisms, a, a piston filler, and this is like an eye drop. And that's true. I think the deal breaker here for the 380 or 390 euro is a little bit that it comes only with a steel nib. Because if you go Pelican M600, M800, they come with a gold nib. Uh, if you go Graf von Faber Castell Giosch, that will be 60 euro less expensive, costs 320 or so, but it has a gold nib. If you go a little bit up, it's the classic, it costs 480 euro, but it has a gold nib. So you might say the 390 here, they are smack in the middle, somewhere there. I think the problem is that it only comes with a steel nib. And if you add a gold nib, which you can, it basically doubles the price of the pen. I think a gold nib uh adding a gold nib costs like 330 euro alone just for the gold nib then setting you back at you know 680 to 730 euro something like that for that pen which then becomes outrageous so it's a fun pen it's a cool pen it's an innovative design uh, it's a little bit back heavy. I forgot to add that as well before. Otherwise, very well balanced, but like ever so slightly back heavy just because of this massive amount of ink, inclu ink including this um, inner mechanism that can move a little bit. I find it's too expensive, to be honest. 100 euro less, 208 euro, I would say totally fair. That's fine. But like um, 380, I think that's actually stretching it that is my opinion I, I said it before you know fairly large pen pretty much exactly you know like a Lamy Safari or Pelican M800 but of course substantially heavier uh, just because it's uh, brass and stainless steel still Longer than the uh, M800 or the Lamy Safari um, when it's uncapped. Sorry for doing the size comparison at that point in the video. I typically do that a little bit earlier, but I get got carried away discussing the pen. But better late than never. Hey, that's it with this review of the Diplomat Nexus. There you have it. I hope this was a helpful video and I'll see you at the next video. Ciao, ciao.